How are you guys doing? Today is Wednesday, December 1st, 2021. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to do an elite individual profile on Javier Baez. The newest elite shortstop for the Detroit Tigers now turns 29 today, and my intention with this episode is, of course, to of course to take a look and shine the spotlight on who Javier Baez is as an offensive and defensive player as he is getting ready to start his six-year tenure tenure with the Tigers right after he signed a $140 million deal. If you're not familiar with Javier Baez, he is one of the members of this let the kids play generation of baseball where he is incredibly talented on offense and defense. He has the awards to show it. And not to mention that he is he, he's a bit of a chirper on the field, but at the same time, he definitely backs it up, which is fully warranted in the in the world of sports if you can talk it and you can back it up. So just to get into, and and also not to mention he was a member of the 2016 World Series team that brought glory back to the Chicago Cubs organization as well. So just giving a little bit of background, he was originally out, he was originally from um, Puerto Rico, and he would eventually go to play high school in Jacksonville, Jacksonville, Florida. He would eventually be selected by the Chicago Cubs with the ninth overall pick in the 2011 MLB draft, which included names such as Francisco Lindor right ahead of him, Anthony Rendon three picks ahead of him with the sixth pick to the Nationals. Garrett Cole was the first overall pick in this draft as he went to the Pirates. He's now on the Yankees. And Trevor Bauer, who's, who's now not on a team, he was taken with the third overall pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Also in this round, George Springer was taken with the 11th overall pick by the Astros. Jose Fernandez was taken with the 14th pick by the Florida Marlins. Sonny Gray was taken with the 18th pick by the Oakland Athletics. Colton Wong was taken with the 22nd pick by the Cardinals. And Joe Panic was taken with the 29th pick by the Braves, just to give a sense. Or, or the, he's taken with by the, the, the Giants, I'm sorry. Um, but this would give you a little bit more context as the draft class that Javier Baez came out in. And Javier Baez would go on to make his actual debut three years later in his age 21 season with the Chicago Cubs. In his debut season in 2014, he will go on to play 52 games in a season where the Cubs finished with a 73-89 and record. They had won six more games in the previous season, but they still finished fifth in the National League Central. Javier Baez would finish with 36 hits in those 52 games, which is 16 less hits than games played. He would go on to finish with a 169 batting average and a 551 OPS as he was still really trying to find his way. This would lead into his second season with the Chicago Cubs. And in his age 2015 season, he would only or in, in his 2015 season, he would only go on to play uh, 28 games as he was dealing with a lot. One of the things he was dealing with was a broken finger. He got relegated eventually and he would eventually get called up for the uh, for the Cubs as they made the playoffs that season. The Cubs would finish the season with a 97 and 65 record as they would go on to win 24 more games than they did the prior season. This is the year that Jake Arrieta won the Cy Young. Uh, This is also the year that Chris Bryan won the Rookie of the Year and Joe Madden won the Manager of the Year as they finished with the third best record in the division, qualifying for the wild card game. Um, But first, in the the 28 regular season games, Javier Baez finished with 22 hits, six less than games played. He still had six doubles in those 28 games, one home run alongside four RBIs as he finished with a 289 batting average and a 733 OPS in his very limited at-bats. Um, Once the Cubs made the playoffs, Javier Baez would go on to help them. Or first they made first in the National League wildcard game, they would end up beating the Pirates to make it to the National League Division Series, where they played against their arch rival, the St. Louis Cardinals. Javier Baez would hit a three run home run in game four to help the Cubs win as they would eventually end up beating the St. Louis Cardinals in four. And then the Cubs would end up losing in the National League Championship Series as they ended up getting swept by the New York Mets, who ended up going all the way to the World Series just to end up losing to the Kansas City Royals um, in five. Following his second season in the league, Javier Baez would find himself becoming a full-time rotation starter in his third year with the Cubs. 
In his age 23 season in 2016, Javier Baez would play in 142 games in a season in which the Chicago Cubs would finish with a 103-58 and record. They would go on to win the National League Central for the first time in a bit, actually. Uh, this would be the first time that they had won the division since 2008. Um, and of course, while this would be the season that Chris Bryant would win the regular season MVP in the regular season itself. In his first season as a starter, Javier, as a full time starter, Baez finished with 115 hits in the 142 games he played. That, of course, would be 27 less hits than games played as he had 50 runs on the season. He finished with 19 doubles, 14 home runs and 59 RBIs, all, of course, career highs as he was of, uh, as he was playing more games. Finished the season with a 273 batting average and a 737 OPS. Once the Cubs would go on to make the playoffs, they would go on to beat the Giants in four in the National League Division Series. They would end up beating the Dodgers in six in the National League Championship Series after the Dodgers won the West. They would go on to beat the Cleveland Indians as they were as they were at the time. They beat the Indians in seven to win the World Series. And that was the first time that the Chicago Cubs had effectively won a World Series since 1908, ending a 108-year drought, which has been the laughing stock of all of baseball history. And now uh, I'm not actually sure who that current drought belongs to, but that drought does not belong to the Cubs. I believe it now belongs to the Cleveland Indians. Following that 2016 season, which saw him win his very first championship, he would return for his age 24 season and his fourth season with the Chicago Cubs organization in 2017. And in his age 24 season, Javi Baez would go on to play 145 games in a season where the Chicago Cubs finished with a 92 and 70 record, winning 11 less games than the previous season. Um, Javier Baez would go on to finish with 128 hits in those 145 games that would go on to be 17 less hits than games his 75 runs would be 25 more than he put up the previous year he would also put up 24 doubles at that point would that would be the most he put up at that to, to that date he would put up 23 home runs and 75 rbis which would be the most today or which would be the most up until that point he would go on to finish with a 273 batting average and a 796 OPS as the Chicago Cubs would go on to finish the year as or as the National League Central champs for the second year in a row. They would go on to beat the Washington Nationals in the National League Division Series before they ended up losing to the LA Dodgers in five. And of course, this was the season where the Astros would beat the Dodgers. It would later come out that the Astros cheated against the Dodgers, but they still get immunity um, in the whole situation after the fact. This is when the Astros won their second World Series. Um, but of course, following that season, this would transition into Hobby's fifth season with the Chicago Cubs. And this would be the season that really sort of changed how many people started to see Javier Baez. In his age 25 season in 2018, he would go on to play 160 games in a season in which the Chicago Cubs finished with a 95 and 68 record, winning three more games in the previous year. And that extra win or that extra game does include the national wild card series where they did lose to the Rockies um, but in but this would be the fourth year in a row that the Cubs would make the playoffs and in that 2018 season Javi Baez would be named an all-star for the very first time in his MLB career as he would go on to finish with 176 hits in 160 games for that Chicago Cubs team that made the playoffs uh, he would finish with 101 runs the very first time in his career. He eclipsed 100 runs and still to this date, the most runs he's had in a season. His 176 hits are also the most hits he's ever had in a season to date as well. He would finish with 40 RB or 40 doubles as this is the only time in his career he's ever posted 40 doubles in a season. He finished with nine triples, which is also a career high. He posted 34 home runs and 111 RBIs, which led the National League. His 34 home runs and 111 RBIs are also the most he's ever had in a season to date. He would finish with 21 stolen bases, which would be the most he's ever posted in a season to date. He would finish with a 290 batting average, which is the highest batting average he's ever had in a season. He would finish with a 326 OBP, which 
is to this day the highest on base percentage he's ever had. His slugging percentage at 554 is the highest slugging percentage he's ever had. His OPS of 881 is the highest that he's ever had. He would go on to finish with a 129 OPS, meaning that he was 29 points better than the average player when it comes to OPS, which is the best he's ever had. He would finish with a 336 total base or he put 336 total bases, the only time in his MLB career in which he surpassed 300 total bases. And of course, what will go down as his best statistical year, undoubtedly, in his first all-star season, he would go on to be given his very first silver slugger of his MLB career. And he would go on to finish second in National League MVP voting as he finished second to Christian Yelich when Christian Yelich had that amazing season with the Milwaukee Brewers. Like I said, the Chicago Cubs season would eventually end with them losing in the National League wildcard series to the Rockies. But of course, this would transition into Javi's sixth season with the team, his age 26 season in 2019. And in this season, Javier Baez would go on to play 138 games for a Chicago Cubs team that would finish with an 84 and 78 record. They would go on to win 10 less games in the or 11 less games in the regular season. And of course, they would miss the playoffs. However, Javier Baez would go on to repeat as an all-star. This would be the last time he's made it. Um, in the 138 games he played, he would go on to finish with 149 hits. That is 11 more hits than games played. His second year in a row in which he's had more hits than games played. He would finish with 89 RBIs, the second most runs he's ever put up in a season. He finished with 38 doubles, his runner-up for his, his second best. He would finish with 29 home runs and 85 RBIs on the year. That would be the second most he's ever put up in a in a Chicago Cubs uniform. He would finish with a 281 batting average and an 847 OPS and of course he would go he would be named an All-Star for the second time in a row. Since 2019, Javier Baez has not been named an All-Star. This would transition into his age 27 season, his 7th year with the Chicago Cubs organization. And, and he would eventually play 59 of the 60 games that the Cubs would play in a shortened season that was impacted by COVID. And then because they had to shorten the season for all teams to 60 games, they had to expand the playoffs to include eight teams in the American and National League. In the 2020 season, in his age 27 season, uh, he would go on to play 59 games for a Cubs team that finished with a 34 and 26 record. They ended up winning the National League Central, making it right back to the playoffs. In those 59 games, Javi Baez had 48 hit, 45 hits, 14 less hits than games played as he had 27 runs, 9 doubles, a triple, 8 home runs, 24 RBIs. His batting average of 203 would be the lowest he's posted since his rookie year, and he would post a 599 OPS. His offense wasn't that great, but he would still be given the golden glove for the very first and the only time that he's ever been given it in his MLB career. Once the Cubs made the playoffs, they would end up losing two to nothing in the National League wildcard round. They got swept by the Miami Marlins. And following this 2020 season, this would lead into his 2021 campaign, which he would start as his eighth season with the Chicago Cubs in his age 28 season. He would go on to play 90 games before, before eventually getting traded to the New York Mets along with Trevor Williams, and he was kind of traded for cash as well as the Mets were trying to make a run for the playoffs. In the 28 total games he played, and even though we, additionally he did not make an all-star team this year, he finished with 133 hits in those 133 games total, uh, 50 hits in the 47 games that he's played with the Mets. He has 80 runs in that span, the third time in his career he's hit 80 runs in a season. He finished with 18 doubles, two triples, 31 home runs, and 87 RBIs. Both his home runs and RBIs are the second most he's ever posted in a full season to date. He would go on to lead the National League in strikeouts as he had 184 of them. He finished the season with a 265 batting average and his 319 on base percentage and nine or 494 slugging percentage would combine for an eight. 13 OPS. 
And he would not really he would not leave 2021 with any awards, but he would still be recognized as one of the best infielders in baseball. And now that he's 29 and has a brand new contract with the Detroit Tigers, it'll be very interesting to see what he does is now he's going to be playing in the American League against a whole new cast of pitchers for the very first time. And with that said, um, I can't wait to see what he does. And hopefully by this time next year, I'll hopefully have more to say about him. I want to thank everyone once again for listening to all 15 minutes of this piece. I want to thank the Baseball Reference and Wikipedia and MLB sites for giving me all the facts and figures that I needed anyway. And once all of today's exhibitions and matchups are done, I will come back tomorrow on Thursday, December 2nd for another episode of The Elite. And until then, thanks for listening. I hope all is well and I'll catch you with another episode of The Elite tomorrow. Peace out.